Good morning, University of Bohol. Teachers, parents, students, and all staff, and all who are watching our live streaming for this spiritual wellness in this month of February 2021. And I would like to thank again for this opportunity to be your speaker this morning. And for our reflection this morning, we'll be using the text found in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, and in the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament, chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. And it says in Romans 5, 8, God has showed his love to us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And in Isaiah 6, verses 1 to 8, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among the people of unclean lips, and my eyes have been the king. The Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, and with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. He said, Go and tell these people. This is our basis for the reflection this morning, brothers and sisters in the Lord. As we all know, this month of February highlighted the world unknown secular celebration called Valentine's Day. Where were you during that day? No? That was Sunday. This was the day where flowers, hearts, and other Valentine stuff became more expensive because usually on that particular day, people didn't mind the price, but the value and excitement for those person they love. The secular world, if the secular world is able to influence the mindset of the people to celebrate this tradition by means of love, the more we Christians celebrate not because of Valentine, but because of the love God has shown to us concretely through His Son, Jesus Christ. If the teenagers or usually people say, walang forever, but in Jesus Christ, there is always forever because only God could love you more. Like for example, in our church, uh, the United Church of Christ in the Philippines here, the city of Tagbilaran, during that particular Sunday on February 14, we celebrate this uh, celebration in a Christian manner that we allow the activity like all couples' wedding anniversary. So this emphasizes the renewal of vows to all couples who are present during the worship celebration. So why we have this? According to 1 John 4, 8, it is said, God is love. And so, we recognize that whatever kind of love, it could be filial or eros love, it must be modeled or under the umbrella of the agape love of God to us. The love of God that sets us free from any bondage of sin. A sacrificial love that gives us the assurance of life through Jesus Christ. This week also, we open up the season of Lent. Which emphasizes the salvific act of God through Christ who offered his life on the cross for our salvation. 
In our favorite verse in the Bible, which is considered as the heart of the gospel stated in John 3.16, and I believe that all of you knew it. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that those who believe it in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, do you believe that Lenten season is also a celebration of love? Do you believe that? Yes, it is. This is a celebration of love, not through the story or love story of Valentine, but a great love of God to the world. So he sent his begotten son, Jesus Christ, that because of his love, though people continue to commit sin, that he died on the cross, that we may have life. This Lenten season, brothers and sisters in the Lord, reminds us then, that all of us lead lives so filled with the demands of work, the demands of our businesses, or it could be in our family, that little time is left to us to cultivate the garden of our soul. In our preoccupation in the ceaseless business of life, our spiritual health or wellness, if not completely forgotten, is often sadly neglected. But when we do find time to look at ourselves honestly, we soon discover that the spirit of the world has gradually and imperceptibly eaten away our good relationships and even our good intentions of life. But activities like this, spiritual wellness in our good University of Bohol, caters our need to have a regular periods of reflection and renewed effort if we were to be free ourselves from the relentless grief of worldly cares. To once again imitate the example of Christ's love, life, and commitment to serve and reflect it in our lives. That is why our reflection this morning will focus on a particular experience of a person's encounter with the divine. His first-hand experience of God's love and holiness, hoping to guide us and renew us and strengthen us as we face the present situations of our time. Particularly in the book of Isaiah, in our text in Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 8. It talks about the unusual vision, no? unusual vision during Isaiah's call to become a prophet of God. In his vision, he testified that he was standing in front of the council of Yahweh. Can you imagine? You are standing in front of the, of the heavenly council wherein God is sitting on his throne with his, all the members of the heavenly council, with the angels, with the seraphim. No? He was standing in front of the council of Yahweh which claims as the ser uh, serves as the absolute source of authority of the prophets being called by God. Why? Isaiah emphasized this, that his authentic uh, task as a prophet why? Because it is through the approval of the heavenly council initiated by God. Why having that heavenly council in his vision? Because God saw the world that is full or darkened with sin. And yet he loves the world so much. And that is why he has to plan something. He has God initiated something for the world to be saved. For the world to be reconciled to him. In Isaiah's vision, he testified that he was standing in front of the council of Yahweh. And then with his great awe and wonder, he saw the Lord sitting upon his throne. High and lifted up. And his train of robe filled the temple. And all the seraphim or the angels declared the holiness of God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The earth is full of his glory, according to verse 3. Now, Isaiah never only heard and saw it as an outsider, but he was an eyewitness 
This is his first hand experience that he confessed that God is indeed, indeed a great and holy and loving God. And for Isaiah, God's love and holiness brought about the great impact of his life, such as first, experiencing God's love and holiness. He saw his being unworthy in the presence of God, in the presence of this loving and holy God. Because of his sinfulness, he said to himself, Woe to me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the land of the people of unclean lips, according to verse 5. Now, Isaiah saw his unworthiness as primarily as on his personal and also to the corporate level. In one hand, personal level is of course refers to his own self. For him, the kind of life he lives, the kind of thoughts he stands, the kind of words he speaks, and the kind of works he did were all channels of his sinfulness before this holy and loving God. Corporate level, on the other hand, refers to the sinfulness of the whole community which surely affected the life of every dweller's. For instance, sins by means of violence, sins by means of corruption and greed, immorality, wars, hunger of power and wealth, or it could be uh, all forms of evil. Do these things not affect you? Yes, of course. It always affects you and me. Because of this, Sin is like a river which begins in a quiet spring and ends in a stormy sea. According to Mahatma Gandhi, there are seven common sins in the world. One, the wealth without work. Kanabang mga tao nga gustong daggoginan siya, daggog income, pero di ganahang maghago. Second, pleasure without concern, conscience. Pahutak lang sa kinabuhi, palami, bisag unsay, ganahan, bahala na ng konsensya. Third, commerce without morality. It could be related to the business, even it includes your morality issue. Fourth, science without humanity. Fifth, worship without sacrifice and commitment. Sixth, politics without principle. And seven, knowledge without character. What's the purpose of having that high degree or being knowledgeable of something? But in terms of character, something wrong with it. Friends, these things mentioned above are some examples that for Prophet Isaiah, woe for these are unclean in the sight of God. God's love and holiness for him is like a mirror that by looking to it, one will see his own self and he will see his whole being and have a chance to fix it. Just try to imagine when you plan to go out at home, no? And it could be you will be going to the mall to buy something. Usually the last thing you do before going out is to look at yourself in the mirror. Why? Usually, we want to be uh, presentable enough to the people who look at us. Mauna nga manamin yun ta. Then, bisag humanag panudlay, hala, gubuto na pong buhok, kay manudlay na pong balik. No? Onya, ugway mga, unsama mga gel-gel, usahay, kanang kinaraan, kay matututurap, tutututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututututut
and have found the deepest meaning for their lives, why should it not be the same for you and for me? God speaks to us, You shall be holy, for I am the Lord, your holy God. In Leviticus chapter 19, verse 2. Second, experiencing God's love and holiness, he became clean and made righteous. Can you imagine no? the dramatic scenes of a vision? Then flew one of the seraphim to me, he said, having in his hand a burning coal, which he had taken his tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt has taken away. Your sin forgiven. According to verses 6 to 7. This means that only God, by means of His love and holiness, can make you righteous and clean. There is no such thing as you declare yourself to be righteous. I am a good man. I am a righteous man. But no, according to prophet Isaiah, only God, through his love, through his power and holiness, can make you righteous and clean. Remember that when we have encountered with God, one of his agenda is to convict us because of our sinfulness. And when a man experiences the regions of God's love and holiness, he can do nothing but to confess that he is a sinner. He is unworthy before God and before humanity. And he has to accept and believe that only God can give him the assurance of forgiveness. By this, as the angel of the Lord said, your guilt is taken away, your sin forgiven. Kung sa binisaya pang aversion, nakita ni Isaiah nga ang usa sa mga mimro sa konsiho sa ginoo, usa sa mga anghel, milupad padulong sa altar, nipunit og baga, og nilupad padulong niya og ang baga nga nagkayo, of course, baga kayo jo na. Gidusil sa iyang bakba og miingon, nakatandog kini sa imong kinabuhi og wala kanay sala. That is the declaration of the assurance of forgiveness and the declaration of being clean and free from sinfulness. Moreover, in our text in Romans 5.8, it said that God has demonstrates, demonstrates His own love for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. No, He died for us because of His love. This kind of love that is so unconditional, sacrificial for you to live, for you to have that assurance of life. And that is the celebration of love that the Christian should always claim and always treasure in his heart and his whole life. Parihara na ba? No? Nay istorya. Binisay o na to ng istorya. At itong Valentine's Day, di hayo sa kabatan o ng uyab. No? Ya kay ganahan gyud siya nga sugton siya kay in love kay siya sa girl. Ingon ang mao nga pag date nila, ingon dayon ang lalaki. Sugton na ba ko nimo, no? So, di ba kasagaran ron mga pakilig-kilig. No? Na ba koy chance sa imong kasing-kasing, o? Karon na ba? Ingon dayon ang girl, iyang gisuwayan. Sige, sugton taka. Basta kay imong dalhon dinis akong tatubangan ang kasing-kasing sa imong inahan. Actually, the meaning of that is not literal. Should not be uh, understood literally. Naingon lang ang girl, dada dinhi ang kasing-kasing sa imong inahan, din sugtun taka. Unsa may meaning, ana? Nga gusto sa babae nga doon na siya assurance nga acceptable siya sa inahan sa maong lalaki. Meaning, the, the, the mother also has the heart for her. Okay? So, maunay punto unta sa babae. Pero ang lalaki, nga nagpakabulok tungod sa iyang paghigugma, no? usahay, kinirba ko ng babae magpakabulok o ma-inlove, pero daghan pong lalaki mabulok o ma-inlove. No? Actually, 
when you are in love, unya, ingnon ka sa uban nga, kabright unta nimo, balidiktorian, salutatorian, or with owners, dahil yung nakauyab ka lang, nabulok ka naman, actually, dili na siya bulok. Nahigug ma lang yun siya. Kaya nga, no? Once you are in love, you are not using your brain, but you are using your heart. In terms of computation, you use your brain. In terms of reasoning, you use your brain. But you feel the love, you use your heart. Mauna nga mo ingon ang wa kasabot sa imong pagka pagka in love na bulok ka na. But actually, you are not using your brain. You are just using your heart. No. So mao to dagan dayon. Kaya nabulok man lagi ko noon, dagan na yun, uli. Kaya bugtong man laging anak, kanya, uh, single mother po. Nay, nay, sugto na ko sa akong gipanguyaban, nay, pero nasi hangyo ni mo, nay. Ano sa man? Akong dadoon imong kasing-kasing sa iyong atubangan, nay. Ang inahan nga mahigugmaon, ingon na yun siya, kaya wak po lagi kasabot. Sige dong, gihigugmati ka dong, kaya ikaw lang ang bugtong bahandi sa akong kinabuhi. Kuha a ang kutsilyo dong. Lugita ang akong kasing-kasing. No, ay lang mo pagbuot kay ako maning istorya. Kuha kutsilyo ang anak. Gilugit. To. Gisamaran ang bughan. Gilugit ang kasing-kasing. Which usually emphasize also nga daghang higayon. Nga ang mga ginikanan mo sakripisyo o bahalag masakitian. Basta lang malipay ang mga anak. Take note. Children. Your parents sacrifices a lot just for you to be happy, just for you to have a good life. And then, gilugit, pagkalugit pa, nagkadugo-dugo ang kasing-kasing, nagisapuang sa anak, o sa iyang ka-excited, nga madala na niya ang kasing-kasing, siya na tubangan sa babae nga yung hinigugma, nidagan siya o kusog, nakalimot siya ang dos andanas, iya lang balay, wa na ni Agig Hagdanan, so natagak siya, pagkatagak pa, Tambling-tambling ang ulitaw, nakabuhi ang kasing-kasing, nagligid-ligid, nagkabunbon. Bisan pa kunog nagkabunbon ang kasing-kasing sa inahan. Nisinggit pag yun kunog ang kasing-kasing sa inahan. Ngayon, dung, wa baka mapangos. Ingon ni anak, kaya may gugmaon ang ginikanan sa mga anak. And even God loves us so much that He died for us. So, pag abot niya dito, iyang gihalad. Iyan siya nga, dai ni ara ang kasing-kasing. Kamunalay sumpay, ugonsay ang nga isumpay anang istoryaha. But the point is, the faithful love of God to us, though He sacrifices a lot, He offered His life just for you and for me to be happy, to experience life eternal. Because he died for us. Listen to this confessional of confession of Samuel Bernard. No condemnation can be brought against the sons of God. Christ has for them a cleansing rod and washed them in His blood. They are righteous in what He's done, and even more will be. They stand complete in Christ the Son, from condemnation free. A lot of people nowadays, brothers and sisters in the Lord, spending multi-millions of pesos or money and act in the sinful way just to make their names clean and pretend to be righteous, claim to be righteous. Well, maybe they can be by means of unjust judicial or it could be in legislative process. Like for example, a lot of our experiences in the previous years, many of our politicians, leaders, were put into prison because of corruption. They are uh, corrupting uh, multi-millions of money in our government. And yet, they were free and even they won during elections. And some people may believe and look at them as righteous. They may become in the sight of the people, but unclean and unrighteous in the sight of God. For the true righteousness can only be found in God through Jesus Christ. Because, again, God is holy and loving God. Third, experiencing God's love and holiness, He can do nothing but to say yes to serve the Lord. 
In the counsel of God, the Lord asked, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah, with his unusual dramatic experience of God's holiness and love, had strongly declared, Here I am, send me. He made that strong declaration of commitment and willingness because Isaiah, such ex for Isaiah, such experience of a divine encounter became a source of inspiration and courage. His courage and inspiration to go for service is not determined by any reason other than his faith and knowledge of this great loving in holy God. However, according to some observations, denial is the most common defense mechanism of a person, especially for being tasked of something that is risky. Why? Usually, if we choose to have that particular task, on sa ko na imong pilion, di ba? Commonly, we choose the easy one. We don't we don't like the risky one. But Prophet Isaiah gives us the lesson that if we only open the eyes of our faith to see the greatness of God's love and holiness, it's hard to say no. Because God does not only convict and give us the assurance of forgiveness, but God also inspires us for a greater purpose, and that is to serve by means of our capacities, capabilities, skills, and professions. According to Ronald Reagan, he said, there are three uh, types of Christians who respond to the call of service. One the so-called robot Christians. What does it mean? These are people that they have to be pushed whatever, wherever they go. Kinahanglan pa rin mo No, Maghuwat pag yun o gitukmod. Second, sailboat Christians. They always go with the wind. Paling-paling. Kung ang imong tapad, no, no po ka. Kung ang imong tapad, yes, yes po ka. But what if? Gitungan ka. Ang imong to, no. Ang imong wala, yes. Unsa naman. Third is the steamboat Christian. They make up their mind with the, uh, the ought to go and go there regardless of wind or weather. Now you judge your own self whether you're like a rowboat or a sailboat or a steamboat and think of who among the three God would be happy. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Serving God is always risky. And even taking good care of our family is always risky. Doing our task, our job, our responsibility is always risky. Hence, it's easy for a doubtful Christian to say a no answer, but it's easy to say yes to serve for a faithful Christian. And though it is hard to follow, but by faith we know and believe that we can remember that God is not looking for more stars, but He's looking for more servants, committed servants. What's the use of your talent if you're not committed? What's the use of your profession? What's the use of your title? What's the use of your capacity? What's the use of your wealth? What the, what's the use of your brilliance? What's the use of your expertise and knowledge if you are not available for the Lord. A good friend of mine said, and I'm blessed of his word, remember that the best ability is availability. Again, the best ability is availability. Now, can you be like Isaiah who strongly said, here I am, send me. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God is calling us to reflect ourselves in this Lenten season and this culmination week of this love month. To always put our lives in His holy presence, in His loving care, for us to become always reminded of who we are and what we ought to be as followers of Christ. We have all our dreams and aspirations in life. 
with our own self, with our loved ones, with our families, with this university. But remember, only God can bring these dreams and aspirations in life come into reality. And if we truly recognize God in our daily lives, let us live a life that is worthy for the Lord. Let us live a life that is committed to serve. Whatever professions we have, whatever the status of life we have, and whatever situations that we are facing, we are facing at this uh, moment, this is always a challenge for us. As we remember that God is always faithful in His love to us. Be faithful. Use your talent, your capacity, your profession to serve the Lord. And that He will continue to bless us. He will allow your dreams and aspirations in life come true with your loved ones, with your family, and to all of us. God bless to one and all, and God bless to this University of Bohol. Amen.